Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today I'm in a laboratory in Southwest Florida and I'm going to talk about an orchid today in the laboratory, my work with an orchid in the laboratory that I normally don't grow and I don't like that much but everyone else does. So everyone loves this orchid and, and because everyone loves it I have to do something with it. And what I'm talking about is the ghost orchid. Um, it's, you know, it's a leafless orchid. There's not much to it. When you find it growing in the wild here in Southwest Florida, it looks like it's the remnants of what any other orchid, of a living orchid. Um, all you, it's just roots. The roots kind of wrap around the tree. There's no leaves, there's no nothing. Um, it does have really spectacular flowers limited time of the year but they're not that big um, and they're, they're, they're not great but they're fine. Um, and, and again I'm working with it because the ghost orchid is native to this area and I've seen it I've seen it in the wild and it's fine, but again, when you see it, it just looks like roots wrapped around the tree. It's nothing really striking until it flowers. And then even when it flowers, you, you, don't, you don't get that many flowers usually. Um, ghost orchid is, uh, it's threatened. It's endangered in this area. So uh, the people that know about the location of the native orchids are very secretive about uh, handing that out. You know, when you go on these uh, swap walks and walks, you're supposed to either not take pictures or take the GPS coordinates out of it so that when you take a picture, you can't relay that information to anyone else. So they are protected um, and it, there's an aura about it. The main aura about it is because it's, uh, you know, it's the subject, the main subject of the book the Orchid Thief, and it is about John LaRoche, who is a real person <laughs> that, that actually poached orchids from the Everglades. And, and, and this was one of the, or he, he did a lot, but this is one of those that, that was highlighted and goes to mysterious. And um, anyway, I've met John. Um, I was um, I, I was out at a botanical garden somewhere, and he I was walking through, and he stopped, and he he stopped me, and he says, "Do I know you?" And I explained to him who I was, and he said, "That's it, I do know you." And he told me, you know, be, because it's interesting, he kn he knows how to do this a little bit. He knows how to do tissue culture and and propagation and cloning, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't working with orchids at the time, many years ago. Um, so I th he's also a hustler, and I think that he just saw me and thought he knew me. I don't think he did. And anyway, um, so a lot of the hype over the ghost orchid was generated by this guy and the book and the movie and everything like that. Um, what, what I've, I, and, and again, I work with in the laboratory and I have other people that bring me, either bring me ghost orchid um, flasks or tissue or tell me they have it or show it to me in their collection. And, and that's fine. And um, again, it just looks like roots either on a tree or on a board or something like that. The work that I do in the laboratory and the reason I'm sharing this with you today is because I have a lot of I have a lot of ghost orchids. So most of you, yeah, you can see these flasks down here and these flasks up up there. These all contain um, ghost orchids, and I'll get higher higher um, closer video of this so you can see what they look like. But it just looks like it just looks like um, you know roots growing in the flask, and that's what they do look like. Um, they grow well in the medium. They're, you know, the roots are growing up the side of the containers here, and and they're fine. I um, I have some. So these are what the and these are native ghost orchids. These were collected. The seeds for this from a capsule were collected under permit from one of the local areas. Now under that permit, these plants must be returned 
to that local habitat. And so, um, so what, but what I do in the laboratory, what I've been doing is I deflask these things, a special way to deflask them, get them established, and then they're returned. I was talking to one of the people who's going to be doing the returning, and I was a little disappointed because he said when they do this typically, the survival rate is very low. So they'll have, when, when you take these nice, and these are nice, deflast orchids and you put them up in nature, it's 15% at the most survival rate, which is, which is low. Now I'm going to work with these people to try to increase that because I think that we can. It may be a question of not deflasking them properly, treating the orchids the right way, not putting them in the right place in the tree. There's all these things that I've learned from um, the work that I've done in the laboratory and in mounting those that I think would, might be beneficial. Okay, so these are the nice uh, or, you know, these are the nice uh, orchids. What happens when I flask these seedlings is you get there in, in some cases there's a lot of nice looking seed in there but then what happens is a, with a lot of the seed is you have in the, the nice ones when they germinate there's a lot of root formation and the root and those are what I then take and replate onto another medium in so that they'll get bigger what I leave behind are these masses of proliferating roots and shooty-like pieces, green pieces with some roots hanging out. These are, I think, are undesirable, but they're proliferative. So you can take these and transfer them and have them multiply and grow. Um, I have some colleagues that gave me some of their ghost orchids, and their ghost orchids look that's right here, and I'll get, a, I'll get a closer video of this. These look like just a mass of roots that are um, growing, but they're real compact, and they're very tightly clustered. What I think what a lot of people are selling is the stuff that I throw away, that I don't take, these proliferative mats of roots. I don't know, and they're also the roots tend to be smaller when they do this and less organized, whereas the nicer... The nicer roots, uh, you may even be able to see the difference all the way from here. Again, I'll get closer. The nicer roots tend to be thicker and more elongated. Um, so these are the ones that I tend to go for. These are the ones that apparently other people are selling, that people are buying, that I throw away. Um, so that's what, and, and they're really easy. So if you take these proliferative um, masses, they're really easy to just uh, divide and continue to grow. That's the type of thing that you have. Now, um, one, of the, one of the things is with deflasking of these orchids, you can't, you cannot, de most of the time when I deflask my other orchids in the laboratory, these, these nice things that do have a lot of roots, but when I deflask all of my other flasks, you know, they're leaves, and so you put the roots in the orchiata bark, and the roots and the orchiata bark and the leaves are up. With ghost orchid, all they have is roots, and if you bury them, that's not going to do any good. So the way that ghost orchids survive is they have, and, and most orchids have photosynthetic roots, but it, you can't bury them because that won't do any good. So what I have, what I do, is I place um, the the ghost orchids. And this is what I've been doing with some of my orchids. I place them on burlap. So these are some um, burlap. These are some ghost orchids that are on burlap. And this is a. This looks like a single plant right here. Again, I'll get close-ups of this. Um, but the roots are bright green. They're photosynthetic. And what happens is the roots grow out and uh, on the bottom of this container. And then to mount this in nature, the burlap, similar to what I do with my burlap fowls and dens and everything else, you just wrap them around uh, the tree. And I attach them with rubber bands. Other people use zip ties or other types of cord or something like this. Um, but this looks like this is going to work really well. Uh, they, you know, again, they got to get light. They got to be photosynthetic. Um, these were only deflasted a few weeks ago. I am going to 
try these similar to my other orchids uh, in a grow tent under higher intensity light and I think they'll probably do pretty well on that. I should also say that there's a lot of history with uh, ghost orchids in the mycorrhizal fungi um, and these were inoculated like I do with all of my deflast orchids. These were inoculated with mycorrhizal fungi uh, last week. The actual um, solution in the tub is cloudy because of the inoculation of the fungus but also there's a clay carrier and that's what gives rise to most of the, this cloudiness that's in the bottom of the container. Um, but anyway, what'll happen with these things is they'll, they'll be left in here uh, for about three months uh, and then they'll go into my grow tent for probably a couple of months, but we'll see how they grow. These guys that I just deflasted a short time ago, you're, I'm starting to see some new root in it. Only, only I think it's four weeks ago. I might have said three, but I think it's four weeks ago. I treated three weeks with the uh, the mycorrhizal fungi. So at the but so they will again go to the grow tent, stay in there for a little while, and then I'll gradually acclimate them. And the timing will be right. So this thing, the best time to mount orchids in trees, ghost orchids, any of the other orchids is in the um, late spring and summertime here when it rains every day. Once you, you know, you put them on the tree, the roots will grab on because the tree is the source of all the nutrients and that's what orchids do is they grab on to the trees. Once they establish it raining every day, it's easy for those roots to get the water that they need. They'll grab onto the tree, they'll establish. Once they establish, that's good. So um, I got the timing of this so that these guys are going to be ready to be established, to, to be put outside and establish themselves so that they can handle the dry season, which is the winter time here. All right, so um, that's all I have. That's all I wanted to share with you today is just some of my, um, some of my effort with ghost orchids and what I'm working with. And if you don't, don't make a comment, ooh, can I buy some because I can't, they're under permit and they're going back out to where they came from. I'm going to put a lot of them out. I don't know how many hundreds of these I have, but um, they're going to go back out. And, and again, even I'm, I'm hoping to increase the survival rate based on what I've learned from some of the orchids that I'm working with. All right, that's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, that's it. Again, I hope you enjoyed it and happy propagating.